In the last video, we were able to see physical modeling at one extreme of realism, which is it's about as real as it's going to get. Um, with the piano tech, I personally would not be able to tell you a difference between whether or not somebody had recorded a piano a particular way or if they'd used that plugin. Now, whether or not you prefer the sound of that instrument versus a multi-sampled instrument is a whole nother discussion, but that's not the point and purpose of this course. We're just showing you the different synthesis methods. And in the case of physical modeling, I want to go from the one extreme in terms of realism, which is piano tech, to the other. But in between, we have some other stops along the way. And the string studio is a couple notches back on the realism scale. But at the same time, you can definitely tell that this sounds very similar to strings without using any particular samples. So let's just uh, play a couple notes here. And from listening to that, you can tell a couple of things right off the bat. One is this is certainly an instrument that is capable of more than just your basic string sounds. This is designed for music producers, for sound designers to be used right out of the box. It has built-in arpeggiators, it has built-in effects. But when it comes to the sound itself, I have a hard time figuring out what string sound that is. It definitely sounds like something is being plucked or possibly being picked, but it seems like it's some kind of crossover between picking an acoustic guitar and like a harp. It almost sounds like a harp is getting plucked. At least that's the sound to my ear. And String Studio is a very good name for this instrument. Maybe String Warehouse would have been even better because it's like a more generic form of physical modeling where you as the user get to have a lot of fun with it and create your own kind of hybrid string instruments. Are you going to be able to get a Steinway piano out of this thing? No, probably not, but you can get some really interesting string sounds that might work in a whole range of genres. Probably is not going to be appropriate if you're trying to score a film and you need a particular piano or a particular violin, but it will definitely work in your own music, and um, it's a lot of fun to mess around and work with. But first things first, let's go ahead and turn off things like the arpeggiator and the effects. And I always think when you're learning about synthesis, so you got to make sure you turn off the effects so that you don't get confused by what's actually generating the sound and what's being added on after. When you're into production, by all means, you know, effect away. But as I go into this edit tab here, I know immediately that this is some kind of physical modeled instrument. I'm not seeing oscillator here. I am seeing a filter, but I can tell it's turned off. Instead, I have things like exciter geometry, right? The geometry of that exciter, the string itself, the damper on the string, the termination, okay? The finger position or the mass of the finger, I should say. How, how hard is that finger hitting it? Of course, this is turned off now as well, but we could go in and turn that on too. Um, and then at the end here, we have the body, all right? And we have a mixed control of just how much of that we want. Do we want it to be 100%? Or do we want it to be zero? So this, this is kind of almost like a uh, reverb control in some ways, only that what's being reverberated is a physical um, component of normally a string instrument. So here you have, you know, the casing of the piano. Here you have more of an acoustic guitar, something shaped more like a violin or a cello. And then you have this kind of wild card one. I'm not 100% sure what this is supposed to model, but it could just be like a plate or it could even just be some kind of flexible uh, wooden uh, surface of some kind. It's like all filled in. But this is just a really, really cool instrument. And we're, we're developing a sound that's based on real life physical properties, but at the same time, doesn't have to be realistic if we don't want it to be. So let's just listen to have what, what we have right now. From what I can tell, we should have a plucked sound on a string that's not going through any kind of body. So it's just in like open air. You can definitely hear the plucking. And clearly the damper is causing that sort of uh, slapback effect. So if we go into the damper, we might be able to fix that. This instrument requires a lot of experimentation. Now we have just a very basic pluck sound. And if we want to turn on the body, why don't we put this into an acoustic guitar, turn that on. We have 
some filters inside of the body as well. So we can hear how it opens the sound up a little bit. a sort of instrument you can like just spend hours and hours tweaking away on. And I don't want to do that here, but I'm getting so tempted already. Uh, and I'm not going to go through and talk about each of these controls, but let's talk about the more generic controls at the very least. Here with the exciter, we can get that string to vibrate by a number of means, we could actually turn this off entirely. So it's as if God is now somehow hitting the string. And in this case, it's actually not making any sound based on how I have things set up, but I should be able to load up a preset where maybe I can turn something off where we can still hear it. But we can hear when the pluck is off, when the exciter is off, it's just like this very bizarre sound, which might be useful, but... But with the exciter, we could use a variety of things. One would be a bow coming across the string. That doesn't sound particularly realistic. Maybe we can actually find something that's bowed that does. So in terms of realism, that's a bit better. But I think if I actually needed real strings, I would not be turning to this instrument. I like this instrument more in the fact that I can create kind of my own thing. And this is actually a good example of that. So we have a bowed string, okay, that is then inside of like a piano type casing. So it's as almost as if you took a bow, you reached inside the piano and you started to bow it. <laughs> But maybe instead of that, we want to use a pluck inside of that piano. And, you know, this is just giving you some examples. Of course, the effects have been turned on again. But I just wanted to show you how, in terms of physical modeling, it doesn't always have to be a realistic result. Okay, this is somewhere in the middle. You don't normally see people plucking away inside of a piano, although some people do, and they have uh, used that. Uh, there's recordings of that in the past. But, um, of course, with this instrument inside of the computer, you can come up with all sorts of uh, fun and cool combinations. Um, I tend to find that working with presets and then just messing around with, you know, the body and the exciter controls is normally enough for me. And uh, those are really the major components of the instrument here that have been physically modeled. So we're not using samples. We're using algorithms. And we're trying to um, emulate the sound of what a string would do, right? So whether that's been excited by a hammer coming up, some kind of mechanism pushing down. Or the pluck. Or, of course, the bow. And now with the bow, it's cool because we have other controls like force and friction. Whereas with the um, hammer that's coming up and striking the string, we have things like mass and stiffness. And with the pluck, we have... Um, the prot in the stiffness. And I'd actually have to look up and see what exactly that's referring to. Some of you already know and are probably like, come on, man, how do you not know what that is? But um, that's physical modeling for you. Add some more friction to it. You can actually kind of then get some experimental things. And when you go in and start to add things like the distortion onto this. This 
actually reminds me of a sound that I just recently heard um, in a track, and I was actually wondering how they got it. I don't think this was how they got it, but um, at the same time, you can see how quick and easy it is to just kind of mess around on the fly and get really unique and interesting sounds that are um, courtesy of physical modeling. And just to show you, I guess, the um, wide array of sounds you can get out of this thing, we can go in and look at something like uh, synthetic sounds. And you'll see that with most of the things that are the synthetic sounds, it's starting with a bowing type effect, and then it's going to be using the envelope. This isn't the best example of that. Let's go to a pad that's using the envelope. One of these definitely will. Okay. Yeah, here's a good example of like a generic pad where we can put the envelope way up. That's too far. And I wonder if there's anything in here that just says, like, straight up experimental. Um, there's some effects. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this shows you, this is sort of a sound I was trying to find. This shows you how you can use physical modeling to create not only realistic sounds, but things that are uh, very experimental and um, unrecognizable in their own right. All right, so in the next video, we'll continue this journey of physical modeled instruments and uh, keep pulling back on that realism scale. Thanks a lot.